I'm Atinux, also known as Sebastian Chopin. I'm trying to wear the same clothes, so you can recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Next Labs. Our mission is to provide the best developer experience to deliver the best user experience for your end users. So we are doing this with Nuxt for about six years now. Nuxt is a web framework for building any kind of view application. This means we can do server-side rendering, static-side generation, and client-side rendering. Since the beginning of Nuxt, it has been downloaded about 46 million times on NPM. We have 300,000 websites live. And we have seen 18,000 GitHub contributors. When I say contributors, I'm saying people creating issues, answering them, creating pull requests, commenting, and same for GitHub discussion. So for this, maybe some of you are here. Thank you very much for trying Next, using it, and helping us making it better. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> So today, I don't know if you heard, but we have Next 2 and Next 3. We needed a web server for development, but also for production. So we use Connect. Connect is uh, the core of ExpressJS. But for Next 3, we decided to create a new one, which is called H3. And most of it is made for working in any kind of JavaScript environment. For the bundler, we use Webpack 4. For Nuxt 3, we were starting with Webpack 5, and then Evan decided to create Vit, which is an amazing solution. But then it took us a bit of time, but we officially support Vit as the default bundler for Nuxt 3. As a UI framework, if I chose React, I won't be here, and I would never choose React. Sorry for some of you guys. Uh, we decided to use Vue. It was Vue 2. Same here for Next 3, uh, we choose Vue 3. I really hope Vue 4 won't happen before the end release of Next 3. <laughs> Evan. So as a routing library, we use Vue Router 3. And for Next 3, we use Vue Router 4. Thank you, Eduardo, for it. But if you don't have a pages directory, because on Next 3, you can have app.view as a starting file, we won't include it, making it as minimal as possible. For managing meta tags, since we do server-side rendering, it's important for you to manage the uh, social preview, the title. We use view meta, and for Next 3, we use view use head. I highly recommend you to check view use, which is a library of uh, composable and function for your view 3 application. And we added something less, uh, something more on it, which is here, I'm calling it as a serverless packager. Poe will talk more about it in his talk. But it's uh, compacting your Next application for production, removing the node module. So your Next application will be about one megabyte for production. I'm talking about the full size of it. So if we compare the Halo world for Next 2, it's about 91.2 kilobytes of JavaScript. And for Next 3, it's 34.1 kilobytes of JavaScript. So it's... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Evan, as well, for making uh, Vue 3 tree shakeable. And we did the same with Next 3. If you don't use any feature, we won't include it in your JavaScript bundle. I don't like to, to compare, but if we take the Next equ equivalent for React, it's about 80 kilobytes of JavaScript. So in this 34.1 kilobytes of JavaScript, we have 25 kilobytes, which is Vue 3. And inside this 8.7 kilobytes, we have the entry point that is uh, handling the hydration, where we give the payload, making sure we don't do the double data fetching on client side. We have a root component that is handling suspense. You can overwrite it as well if you want to. And we're working with Evan, like you mentioned, to fix all the small bugs we can have to make sure you have a seamless experience. And suspense allow us to have, or allow you to have data fetching in any component level. If you don't use the pages directory, we 
give you any way a use router composable, you can still use middleware and use Nuxlink. It can be useful if you have a landing page and you want to use query parameters. We have this head composable and components because I think it's great by default to set the title of your page, uh, meta description and social sharing image. We have a universal data fetching, so you don't need to set up any polyfill between node and your client to use fetch. Uh, Puya, Daniel, and Anthony created oh my Fetch, which is a, um, a wrapper above a fetch, but giving you more capabilities. It parses automatically the JSON. And on top of this, for $fetch, if you create API route in your Nuxt application, it will avoid making another HTTP request, but call directly the function, but I'm spoiling Puya talks. We have also error page by default for 4 and 500. We have this plugin system and the runtime config, which allow you to change the behavior of your next application in production without rebuilding your application thanks to the environment variables. So you can have two different websites only by changing the environment variables. And lastly, we have the use next app composable and the hooks. Uh, for, for instance, we can have the page start and page finish hook you can create a plugin, use them, and create a loading bar between pages. So Nuxt 3 is a web framework for creating any kind of view app like Nuxt 2. It supports server-side rendering, static-side generation, client-side rendering, and thanks to Nitro and the work we have done from the beginning of Nuxt 3, edge-side rendering. Who knows what is edge-side rendering here? So it's about five people. <laughs> I don't know how to count, but it's, uh, I would say, one on ten. So edge side rendering, also called, named JavaScript containers by Ryan Dahl, who is the creator of, creator of Node, and Dino now, is basically the capability of uh, running JavaScript at the CDN nodes. So if we take the Cloudflare Edge network, all of these locations are capable of running JavaScript code inside the V8 environment. V8 is the, um, the engine running JavaScript in Chrome or also in Node. And it doesn't work. Uh, you cannot have access to the Node API or the browser API, so it's pure JavaScript. Let's take an example of uh, app.view. Here I have a list of colors. I'm getting a, an index using a random it's pure mathematic, it's hard to explain. And uh, the use state is uh, run on server side, and we want, we will use the result, which is called number here, it's a typo. Should have been called color index, but it still works. It will not run again on client side, so we're just giving the ref. Hello, view Amsterdam, and I'm using this fancy vbind attribute, thanks to view three, in the style. To deploy my application, I will call uh, Nux build using the Nitro preset, which will bundle my application for a specific target. Here we're talking about workers. And then we deploy to Cloudflare Worker like this. And I deploy the website on AMS, like Amsterdam, .nux.dev. And if I refresh, the colors change. And you can see at the bottom right, the time is about 37 milliseconds. So that's the, the time it goes from refreshing, executing next, coming back. And it changed because of my internet connection that can be slower. But if I take a look <clears throat> at the workers, it's about two milliseconds for the median, and it goes up to 20 milliseconds. But your application can do server-side rendering in about 20 milliseconds. And the advantage of using here Cloudflare workers, it runs milliseconds from end users. So basically, you live in China, you live in India, US, Europe. It will be the same because Cloudflare workers, the edge network is absolutely everywhere. Zero millisecond call start versus a Lambda function where when it's case, it has to create a VM, a virtual machine. It's not the case here. No servers, no load balancer to maintain, automatic scaling, and it's quite cheap actually, cheaper than uh, Lambda functions. And it's not the only one. We are seeing Vercel Edge, Netlify Edge, Dino Deploy, which is based on the Google platform, Lambda Edge, Stackpath, which I discovered, which is an edge engine as well, and more are coming. 
as a front-end developer, my main goal is to make a website for my client and work on the features, enjoying the developer experience, and don't have to worry about the production. That's what this brings, and I'm quite excited about this future. Nitro, which allows this and much more, like several APIs, I recommend you to watch Puya talks right after me. It's him. Developer experience, I wish um, I will have time to explain what we have done so far. Mm. But I'm drinking water right now. <laughs> um, it started with the pages directory. No Webpack configuration. The first talk I did here was you don't have to touch a Webpack configuration. Now who is changing a Webpack configuration? I see you. <laughs> it's same for the vid configuration now. And the abstraction gives you more power to focus on building your app. And the lucky one will be Daniel that will do a live coding to explain the features we have been doing um, to improve your developer experience from Next2 to Next3. The modules is also a big part of Next, allowing you to, um, the Next core is as small as possible. So you can plug features such as image, content, uh, any providers you can plug into Next. And Lucy will be doing a great talk tomorrow about, the, about it. Like Constantine said last week, we uh, released Content V2. So Content V2, um, we needed it at first. We built it for ourselves, for our documentation, a bit like Evan with the ViewPress and VidPress. Um, it allows you to have a content directory, write markdown file, query it, and display it on your website. It's available on content.nuxj.org. It's open source. And um, feel free to look at it. I did a video of three minutes, so I won't be live coding, but I will try to comment my own code. So in order to use Nuxt content, you need to install it. Then inside your Nuxt config, you will add Nuxt content. Oh, I cannot pause. Then you create a content directory, an index file. You say, hello world. Here you use the content doc directory that will fetch the content file directly based on the root path automatically. I'm writing markdown like this. I'm using an emoji. I'm using a code block, but by default, we don't highlight it. If you want to customize it, you can set the content key, highlight. We will use Shiki under the hood, and it supports about 30 themes. So this is the GitHub theme. Another one is the Light Plus. So you see the purple here? <laughs> Better. <laughs> now I'm, ma I'm making a sentence, an about page. So it's empty. It says, OK, you need to create a file. I'm creating a file. It's auto-save. It's super fast. It's as fast as vid for hot module replacement. Then I'm creating a component. In the component content directory, I'm having an alert component, so a style with a slot inside. We have this uh, new syntax to avoid using HTML and be as close as possible from Markdown. It's way too fast. I'm adding some style. You have the video on content.nuxjs.org if you want to pause but I have 10 minutes left. So it supports Markdown under the hood. It supports also props. It supports multi-slots. And we have a um, VS Code extension for highlighting. So I highly recommend you to check it out. We have a Markdown component that we place slot so you can unwrap because Markdown is, uh, is, uh, is adding a, a P every time you add a line. We have a content navigation component that is fetching the list of files. And you can simply list over them like you can see the result, I'm creating a list of link. Ah. So it generates automatically, automatically the title from the first H1 you're creating in your Markdown file. It supports the children, obviously. So you can have nested navigation with dropdown easily. And if I want to change the navigation title, I can use the front matter for this. So here I have a home page. And I about, but damn it, A is before E, I. So in order to rename the order, to change the order, I, will, I can use this uh, prefix with a number. And that works. I think I'm going to put some style on the code block. Mm -hmm. OK. And now I'm going to deploy. I don't know if you know, but Next3 has the generate command. And it works kind of full static for content if you're using it already. You can see this uh, query that has been uh, pre-rendered. I'm deploying to search, and 
So the build is not as fast huh, on generate. It's about two seconds more, but for the video, I kind of cut it. And we have a working website with Markdown in less than three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Nine minutes. What's next? We have next 2.x here, which is, um, we may have a release with 2.16, but maybe not with view 2.7. It might land in 2.17. We need to do more tests about it. We have a pending pull request for 2.16 with many bug fixes that, can, that may land next week or the week after. And we work, it took us more time, but we work on Nux Bridge that allow you to have VIT into Nux 2. Nitro, if you want to also have this edge side rendering, it might be possible. You need to try it, or you need to try it and tell me it's not working. Uh, composition API and script setup, which is also coming with Vue 2.7, which is really good. TypeScript, the CLI, and PostCSS Edge, which was a pain because of the whole uh, ecosystem that took a while to upgrade, but now it's ready. So I think we're ready. For Next 3.0, not all of these bullet points are required, but that's what we would like to see. Next image, which is really close to be released as a beta. Hybrid rendering, that's a tricky one. You can, you, you can already do hybrid rendering with Next 3 today. You can create a middleware, a server middleware, add a header if you're using Vercel, and you have state while, while revalidate. Oh my god, this word. You can have you cannot have pre-rendering yet, but we have a, um, you can either use Next Generate and it will pre-render all of your routes, but we're working on a way to be able to detect what routes can be pre-rendered and the other one on demand. We will add the full static generation. So basically, you can shut down your API and have a full static website that can be completely offline. Preview mode, because it's nice, but if you're able to edit your website and see it, um, Live, that's also a great feature. Server session and authentication. Um, that's a hard one since we want to support all of these mods, client side, server side, hybrid. Um, we are working on it, but we want to make sure when we give you a composable to handle session, it will work whatever the environment you're running and whatever the rendering mode. Service worker, we have a PWA module that is working for Next 3 that has been done by Kevin. Um, but we want to push the service worker inside Next directly because it will allow us to have optimization for scripts, fonts, and more. And lastly, uh, I want to add more SEO helpers and easier ITN support for your Next 3 app. So when? Hmm. <laughs> Summer 2022, that's our goal. Ideally, you'll be drinking a virgin cocktail or a cocktail on the beach while we will be releasing this, 3.0. Also, in the following weeks, we plan to open source Docus. You may have already seen it somewhere. We're using it in the code base. At first, it was a Nuxt module. For Nuxt 2, we were supporting Bridge, and now it works for Nuxt 3 with content, and it's using the extends feature that I did not talk about, which allow full theming capabilities for Nuxt. And on top of this, we also have, we have been working on this live editing um, uh, feature where you can basically edit your Nux content website in production with this picture-in-picture -picture mode. Uh, if some of you are fond of World of Warcraft, uh, that's uh, inspired from it. Maybe we'll put a game inside, I don't know. But that will be possible in a few months. And I think that's it. Thank you very much.